Active speaker systems. Audio amplifiers achieve the point of perfection. Still some forums are discussing Class D amplifiers versus Class AB amplifiers. But anyway, we are at a point where the best in a class amplifier boards are exceeding human hearing limits. I have built one of my last kits for an incredible IcePower 1200A2 board, also compatible with the latest company development, IcePower 2000A2 HV board. Now what next? There is no sense looking for a better solution. You will not hear that in A-B tests because we are already at the human hearing limit. Let's take a look at the sound system quality components and give them ratings. Audio source quality. Critical impact to sound quality. Rating 10 points from 10. Audio amplifier. 6 points. There are plenty of great devices in the market. Just find the right investment and quality points. Speaker system. The most expensive and critical component with a long life cycle. Critical for audio quality and reproduction. 10 points from 10. Connection wires. Not a critical component and you can get a good solution for a reasonable price. Rating just for 2 points. Room has a huge impact on how your system will sound. Typically room and speaker placement importance is underestimated or has a family influenced trade-off. Sufficient amplifier power important to have a power headroom. Let's rate it for 8. Active crossover systems. Today topic and next step of your audio system performance improvement. How much money should we spend for your audio system? Sometimes I have seen excessive audio setup, which in my judgment doesn't make sense. Do they sound great? No doubt, they do. But could we achieve the same performance with lower costs? We can, and difference may be 10 to 100 times. There are some examples of high-end setups, just take a look and estimate the space and equipment involved. We can only guess about system costs but all of them have a great and large speakers. But let's come back to the concept of active speaker system as the next step of audio quality. In the picture you can see my three-way speaker driver system prototype mounted in a 3U mobile rack. It is driving those custom-built three-way speakers based on Troil's Graves and SBA 941 concept. Passive loudspeakers are made of an enclosure, one more transducers also called loudspeaker drivers and passive crossover network. They don't require any mains power. The electrical power is taken from wall socket, 2020 volts or 1010 volts. Other transducers are working with passive electronic components and electromagnetic forces. They receive an amplifier line level signal from a standalone power amplifier. The power amplifier boosts the line level signal from audio source and or preamplifiers to an adequate transducer signal level. Next, the signal is split into different frequencies, bandwidth is typically two or three, by the passive crossover networks mounted inside the enclosure before going sent to appropriate transducers. Note that power amplifier output ratings and passive loudspeaker where admissible power must be covered very much to achieve optimal performance. A two-week amplifier will be incapable of driving the loudspeakers into its full performance and will distort the audio signal before the loudspeakers even get close to its loudest. Controversy, too powerful, an amplifier can overload the passive loudspeaker crossover and transducers, loading to distortion and transducer blowing up. The first active loudspeakers were designed in the mid of 60s by the likes uh, of GBL and Klein and Hummel, and soon after Altec and Meyer sound. An active loudspeaker design implies the use of one or more enclosures, one or more transducers, an active crossover network and separate dedicated power amplifiers for each of the frequency bands split up to by active crossover network. An active loudspeaker is designed to receive a line level signal from an audio source and or preamplifier and amplify and process the signal internally. To do so, mains power is required. First, the line level signal is separated into different frequency bands by the active crossover network. Then each band is amplified separately to transducer level before driving each appropriate drivers, tweeter, mid-range, woofer, depending on the design. Using the technology, active crossover networks can be better optimized to split the audio signal with clarity and precision since they are independently of any power handling issues. The 9-level signal separation occurs at much lower amplitudes than transducer-level signals. In addition, as designers have full control over the components in the design, each element can be optimized to achieve the best possible audio performance. 
One example is a perfect impedance matching between each power amplifier output and the corresponding transducer input impedance. Several other technical benefits exist in active design, such as a possibility to have onboard driver equalization, advanced protection circuits like thermal dispatch, driver and excursion, electronic clipping, etc. As well as digital signal processing, DSP, using additional analog to digital converter and digital to analog converter stages, as featured in different top speaker manufacturer companies' designs. Several versions of active speaker designs can be in this picture you can see an active speaker system with passive crossover solution which could be misleading in some cases. It is still passive crossover design. Several studio monitors and hi-fi loudspeakers are designed in a hybrid way to reduce cost, as they only need two power amplifier channels rather than more complex three-way active crossover networks feeding three separate power amplifiers. This also is not our case. We are looking for true active crossover system with six power amplifiers to drive our speaker stereo system. Passive crossover. Why passive systems are not good and what drawbacks they have? Let us remember how we hear stereo signal. Our stereo perception is virtually synthesized by our brain. Human is not able to sense absolute phase, but they can detect phase difference in a frequency range from 500 Hz up to 4.5 kHz. Below and above those frequencies, we are not able correctly to detect phase, and we are capable to hear only mono signal. Following, we are concluding the importance of the mid-range speaker, which is determining our sound stage. In passive crossovers, we have a lot of phase distortions on the edge of the crossover bandwidth. Each reactive element is shifting phase by 90 degrees. Two reactive elements by 180 degrees. It's not a problem for sound range reproduction if your system passive components have a perfect match. If not, we are in the trouble. Also, we have transducer overlapping area, which is another design challenge. Let's take a closer look to the good passive crossover design and amount of components between amplifiers and speakers. Especially regarding mid-range, where in series we have several resistors switchable nominals. Our amplifier damping factor is destroyed, and for a mid-range, instead of a couple of hundreds, it's down to one, in a worst-case scenario. Our mids becoming muddy and losing details. Crossovers can be sophisticated and contain a large number of high-powered components. You need incredible manufacturing tolerance and culture to get to repeatable good phase match between both stereo speaker systems. Is active speaker a winning solution? Let's take a brief look at professional three-way near-field monitors. Those are high-end three-way speaker systems with defined reproduction tolerance. Pay attention to the price. Relatively expensive units and the price is not for pair, it's per unit. Frequency ranges from 30 Hz to 40 kHz. Three internal amplifiers, 300 W for a woofer, 150 W for mid-range and 100 W for tweeter. What conclusions we can make? For a good passive speaker system you need about 500 watt amplifier to match the same performance. It is solid built from 21 mm MDF and 30 mm front panel. For my speaker prototypes I'm choosing the same material thickness mostly using playwood which is broadly available in my region. The speaker system is lighter and the material is more protected if falls from some height. You can see that this particular studio monitor is using analog crossover without DSP. For three-way systems when using good manufacturer speaker drivers there is no need for DSP and we can build a simple active system using industrial cost-effective analog active crossover. Another popular Newman model with an analog active crossover. All of the models have room correction settings for three bands. For precise setup measurement microphone is recommended. Adam S3H, good example is built in DSP. Price is significantly higher than for Newman. Pay attention to the amplifier power. 500 watt for a woofer, 300 watt for a mid-range, and 50 watts for a tweeter. One more proof is that for a good music system you need a powerful amplifier and have recommended headroom. This unit can go loud up to 126 SPL. All around good three-way speaker. You can see that all room correction settings are done via USB port, no knobs for manual adjustments. And quick browse through other models to see price range and different design configurations. Draw your attention that there are no slim floor standing designs. It is not a winning solution for rational thinking designers, 
Minimum footprint and maximum tolerance can be achieved with a classic design. This is why I like Travis Graves and classic designs. Do I need DSP? Most of the modern and enthusiastic active speaker builders put a big bet on DSP. Yes, you have full control of a speaker settings, but it is not eliminating the importance of speaker placement and room treatment. Let us study modern speaker characteristics, and I will take budget version of modern loudspeakers as an example. Budget woofer, data on audio RS270P, 4A, 10 inch. Incredible characteristics. RS125, 4.5 inch reference woofer, 4 ohm mid range. The same, almost perfect linearity. Reviews also are pretty good. DC28 FT8, 11 slash 8. Silk dome trunket tweeter. 8 ohms. Mainstream tweeter, the same, very good frequency characteristics. What conclusions we can make? There is no critical need for DSP. We can use analog professional 3-way stereo crossover and achieve excellent reproduction tolerance. Prices of such units are around 100 to 150 euros and my advice, start with analog crossover, prefer invest in high quality DSP. Let's take a closer look at the mainstream budget Behringer CX4400 Super X Pro model, available in any respectable professional music equipment shop. Through the years, analog crossover evolved to perfect unit. Functionality is optimized, and you will find out that several brands of manufactured units share almost the same functionality and design. Large volumes of production results in low price. Compare with units from the consumer market. Professional unit price is unbeatable, and I recommend purchasing some models from the professional market. What controls do we have? Input level for the channel, crossover frequency setting controls, delay between low frequency and mid range in case you have subwoofer and tops architecture, gain control for each band to align speaker sensitivity differences, and some service knobs for easy setup. Read the manual for more information. Manual is available in the internet. Electronically balanced outputs perfectly match ice power second generation boards. All of them has balanced inputs. Easy setup from professional components. You can stop this frame and study the description of the controls. It's not today's goal to learn how to use crossover. Download the PDF manual and do it by yourself. It is interesting reading including methodologies and how to choose the right crossover point and tune your system. Balanced connection wiring example. Technical characteristics for your study, those are far better than any speaker can reproduce. I assembled such system and it is true WoW system. Currently it's my unbeatable permanent music system for demo purposes. Boards for an active speaker system. There is relatively small number of ready-made systems available for the consumer market. Hypex is one of the well-known companies with a fusion active speaker lineup. But in my opinion, we can build better system integrating professional components for a much lower price. First option, the state of the art system. You can build from three boards. One Ice Power 1200 days 2 board for the woofers and two power supply separated Ice Power 200 days 2 boards. An estimated complete project budget would be around 1000 euros. Second option, four Ice Power 125A6 2 boards. Two of them in Bridget connection and two of them in a single ended. It will give about 450 watts for a woofer and 125 watts for a mid range and tweeter on a 4 ohm load. For 8 ohms load, half of this power. The total system budget is also about 1000 uh, thousand euros. Third option Ice Power 300 AS1 with two hunger models and a speaker impedance mix. Woofer 4 ohms, mid range and tweeter 8 ohms. For the stereo systems you need two sets. System estimated costs also close to 1000 euros. This system low light is sharing the same power supply for the woofer, mid range and tweeter limiting maximum power performance. And the last item to discuss is what would be the optimum architecture for your active speaker system. So, highlights and low lights. Let's look at the active system advantages and disadvantages. Direct speaker connection to amplifier output. This ensures the best possible control over the loudspeaker and the best detailization of the sound. It is a reason why to build an active speaker system and why it is better than passive system. Once you start listening to high quality active systems, it is hard to go back to passive systems due to the reproduction precision. Passive systems are not capable to such performance.
excellent crossover component match. At low level signal we can build cheap and very good quality crossovers with 24 dB slope, link with Rayleigh really architecture, perfect phase characteristics and crossover point adjustment flexibility. Finally achieving the best audio performance. Low lights. Initial costs are higher. For three-way stereo system you need six amplifiers. You need evolved power, which in some cases limits your speaker placement option. Setup is more complicated than passive systems. System is not easy exchangeable. You need tuning for each new speaker system. Uh, let's discuss different architectures and how to build your active speaker system. First you can build all electronics inside the speaker box and save on chassis. Most professional middle field monitors have such architecture. It is an integrated solution with a minimum footprint. What drawback we have? There is no space for experiments and upgrades. We should live with what we have. I guess that is the main reason why home users are not big fans of such solution and not purchasing middle field monitors for home audio purposes. An alternative is building the speakers as an electronically empty box with three speaker connectors on the back panel and assembling electronics in flight rack for example. In such cases you have a lot of flexibility to play with the crossovers, analog, digital and passive as well. Also you can make compensation tests, upgrade some old speaker systems from garage sales by replacing the mid-range and tweeter with modern loudspeakers, etc. For such architecture you need three speaker cables which is a minor drawback and costs, but you have a lot of flexibility. And what is more important is your speakers don't need wall electricity. Those are passive even without internal crossover. Easy to build, pure carpent and work that is easy to outsource. There is one practical example of how I made in my case. In the picture is my first system prototype still in operation. You can see that it consists of two rack mount units. Smaller one crossover and larger one six channel amplifier box based on IcePower 125X2 original boards. Professional connectors for easy connection. In the final design for practical usage, I mounted electronics in a stand. It was easy to move and uh, test with other speaker systems like a mobile rack. But flight or small open rack could be a good solution if you have stationary system and do not need a lot of experiments. Hope you have found some fresh ideas for your next generation audio system. I personally like the idea of garage sales sold expensive unit purchases for sandwich price and upgrade to the modern speaker system replacing mid-age and tweeter if needed. If you build rack mounted active speaker driver system, your application solutions don't have limits. You only should care about the woofer health. And it is easy to build 10k worth of music system for 1000 euros.